Saxon Algebra 1, Lesson 8. The topic of today's lesson is area. Just to clarify, we've talked about perimeter. Perimeter is a measure of length. It usually measures the distance around an object. If we're measuring a circle, it's the same idea. We just call it circumference. These are both measures. Hi, Grace. Grace is here. She wants to hear about circumference and perimeter. Good girl. Good girl. They are measures of length. And again, the, a circumference just remembers, measures the, uh, the length of a, the outside of a circle. And in that respect, they're one dimensional, not one direction, one dimensional. Um, area measures length, L-E-N-G-T-H, times width. It measures all of that. It measures all of that. It measures all of that. In that respect, it is two-dimensional. When I was in like third grade or something and the teacher was first introducing this, she said, this is the perimeter is the fence around the farmer's field and area is the crops. Oh, that made so much sense to me and has stuck with me forever and ever. Okay, so how so we've talked about perimeter and circumference. We're not going to talk about that anymore. We're going to talk today about area. Now, finding the area of a rectangle. And by that I mean a four-sided object with perfect corners, 90 degree corners. It could be a square, or if the sides are not the same length, it could be a rectangle. So, the, and the formulas are slightly different. If it's a perfect square, you can just take the length of any side and square it because the sides are all the same length. If it's a rectangle, a rectangle has one side that we usually call the length. I make a, like a little loopy uh, cursive L so it doesn't look like a one. And the shorter side we usually call the width. It really doesn't matter which side you call which, but the formula we use to find the area of a rectangle is length times width. giving you a minute to write. Okay, so those are our formulas. Take a minute now and write them in the cover of your book. Notice that even if you forget this square one, if you just use this formula for everything, it'll work perfectly because you would just take two sides of the square and that's the same as that. Okay. So at this point, I'm assuming you've written this in your book. And this is kind of, really, you could write this whole thing. And so let's go on and see how we can apply this in a problem. Example eight one. Find the area of this figure. All angles are right angles. Dimensions are in centimeters. Okay, the first one is the instruction. Find the area of this figure. The second one is a helpful piece of information. It says all of the angles are right angles. That means it's simpler than it could be. If this had crooked corners, it'd be way harder. We don't have to worry about that. He's saying, it's perfect, don't worry. They're all nice little rectangles. So the second sentence, we love, and then we can ignore it. Dimensions are in centimeters. That's good to know only 
when we get to the answer and we need to put a unit on it to label it. So I just write that, set it to the side. Please do that when you start a problem like this. Just write the unit over to the side, circle it to remind yourself, I'm gonna need that later, but I don't need it now. Draw the diagram. I talked to a mom this week, not a mom of anyone in this class, and she was telling me that she was frustrated because her daughter was wasting a lot of time when she was doing the homework copying the figures out of the book. And the mom was telling me that she told her daughter, don't waste your time copying it. It's right there in the book. You don't need to copy it. And I said, well, actually, I do want her to copy it because we notice things when we copy that we don't see when we just look. It also gives your brain just a chance to breathe and to catch up with what's going on with the problem. I'm a huge fan of drawing the diagram. Okay. Now, perimeter, I mean area rather, area of what the heck is this? We don't know. So what we do is we visually chop this up into two smaller rectangles. There's two ways you can go about it. You could chop it this way and make a long skinny rectangle. Here, I'm just gonna draw a smaller one so you can see the two different options. We could chop it like that or you got it, we can chop it like this. Either way, it's gonna be the same process. I'll explain to you the slight wrinkle. I'm gonna chop it this way, that's what I saw first. One is not easier or better, it doesn't matter. But what we're doing is we're making two rectangles. This is gonna be rectangle one. I oh, know I'm gonna make it A and B so I don't confuse it with my numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna write the area of rectangle A right here. So I look at rectangle A and I see that its dimensions are two by three. Oh wait, I did it wrong. It's two by five. You have to be careful with, as you pull the numbers that you're getting the number that represents the full side and not one of the partial sides. So two times five is the length times the width. And so this one has an area of 10. The area of rectangle B now this time, okay, the two is good. We want the two, but we don't want the six because part of this, part of this has already been included in triangle A. So this time we want the shorter one because we just want the rectangle that's like that. So it's two times four and that is eight. Add them up and my answer is 18 centimeters squared. Area is always a square because we're measuring in two dimensions. John sometimes puts his units on as he's working. I don't, I just put it on at the end. That's the right answer. Yay. Okay, that one was pretty easy. How about another one that's got a little twist to it? You know I love a good algebra twist. Find the area of the shaded portion of this figure. What? There's a rectangle, and then there's a smaller rectangle inside of it, and then all this part is shaded. In the book, it's shaded dark gray. I'm gonna draw lines. We're supposed to find the area of the shaded portion. All angles are right angles. Okay, good. We are happy that it's easy. Dimensions are in meters. Okay, whenever we have a shaded region, we know there's going to be subtraction. Um, have you ever done the thing where you take a piece of toast that you're eating and you fold it in half and you bite on the folded part and then you open the toast back up and there's a hole in the middle? That's what these problems are like. This whole rectangle is the piece of toast. We folded it maybe along here, maybe this way. We folded it and then we took a bite out of it and we opened it back up. That's what we're doing. We're trying to find out how much toast we have left. The way that we do that is first we measure how big was the bread and then we subtract how big was the bite, okay? So if you keep that in mind, you will have an easy go of these problems. I will tell you that one time I was visiting a friend of mine 
who it was the daughter of a Malaysian diplomat and their family was living, serving in Cuba, Havana, Cuba. And I went to visit them. And one day at breakfast, she took a piece of toast and she nibbled it into the shape of the continental United States. And she didn't give it to me, but she showed it to me that she had done that like in honor of me, the American at the table. <laughs> she nibbled her toast into the shape of the US. It was amazing, you guys. And I immediately recognized it as soon as I saw it. So that's my story of the day. Um, okay, now we need to have the numbers on this. Eight and 10, and it's really super hard to read. I think it's, this one is six and this side is two. Okay, so we start by doing the area of the toast, which is eight by 10 and that equals 80. And then we do the area of the bite and that is six times two. And that is 12. We subtract and we get 68. Now we can put the unit on it, meters squared. Okay, shaded regions always lead to subtraction. Okay, cool. Now let's talk about triangles. Triangles have a slightly different formula. In order to find their area, and before we can, I can give you the formula, I have to define a few things. A triangle has a base, which is whatever part of it is down as we look at it. Oh, that's a crooked triangle, isn't it? The base is pretty easy to see. So what I've got here is a right triangle, an acute triangle, and an obtuse triangle. Their base is all relatively straightforward and easy to find. The height is the other dimension we need, and that's a little trickier. It's different on all three triangles, so I'm gonna tell you how to find the height. You take a spider and send it up to the tallest part of the triangle. My spiders only have six legs, I'm sorry. They're genetic freaks, but if I draw any more, it just gets too complicated looking, and it looks like a puffball. Okay, I sent spiders up to the top of each one of my peaks, and what I'm telling them to do is to drop a line, one of their web lines, drop it straight down, and affix it to the bottom of the triangle. This one drops it right down along that edge. So this is the height. It happens to be equal to that side of the triangle, which we'll later learn that they're called legs, but this height is equal to this side. Cool, that makes this pretty easy. But when we go to this style of triangle, notice that the web is gonna come down the middle of the triangle, the inside of it. That is the height of this triangle. And here's the weirdest one of all. On the obtuse, it drops down. Oh, it's going to cross over into the other one. It drops down outside the triangle, but that is the height of the third triangle. It actually falls outside of the triangle itself. This one falls inside. This one's on the edge. So when you think about the height of the triangle, send a spider out to show you exactly where that is. Now that we have this, we can say that the area of a triangle equals the base times the height divided by two, okay? The way we say that in shorthand is like so, right? I don't wanna write the words out every time. This is what I'm gonna do. I always draw a little picture, area of a triangle or area of a rectangle. I draw a little rectangle, 
area of a circle, I put the little circle. Another way to express this will, that will be helpful in some situations that we'll come to later. Area of a triangle equals one half times base times height. It's the exact same formula, just laid out a little differently. And there will be times when we'll use this version of it. So please take a moment. You're going to need to pause me. Write all of this in the cover of your book too. If you didn't already, put all of this other information in there too. Trust me, the day is going to come when you're going to be like, ugh. I can't remember. And you're gonna be so happy it's there and you don't have to look up in the book what it is. So pause me now and do this. Okay, you're back. Let's put this to work a little bit, this area of a triangle business. Um, find the area of these triangles. Dimensions are in inches. John's doing the cheating thing where he's putting three triangles into one problem but we'll just quickly do them because we can do this. Um, I'm gonna write up here, area of a triangle equals base times height divided by two. Do that in your homework. Write the formula up above so that if you need it for more than one problem, it'll be right there. Uh, and we see that this is a right triangle, that's four, that's three. Okay, I need to do this. So the base is four. The height, okay, this is a right triangle. I send my spider up, but I know he's gonna drop it right down along that edge, so that's cool. It's four times three divided by two. I cancel before I multiply, so the area ends up being six inches squared, or six square inches, same way, same thing. B, aha. This time our triangle looks different. Four on the bottom, and John has already sent the spider up. I'm drawing it in, he doesn't. He already sent the spider up and had him drop his web. And this is three. So, huh, this looks exactly the same, doesn't it? The base is four, the height is three. We divide it by two because that's what the formula says. We cancel and we get six inches squared. And what do you think is gonna happen in C? I have a strong feeling. He sent the spider up. The height is three. The base is four. When we measure the base, we don't have to worry about this section. I used to worry that somehow I had to account for that. You don't, just use the part that's the actual triangle. This business with the spider, we only need that for the height. Um, six times four, or six times, yes, three times four. Three times four, this time I wrote the height first and then the base, it's okay. We're multiplying, it doesn't matter. We divide by two. So this one is also six inches squared. And so what this tells us is that triangles can look quite different but still have the same area. All right. Example 8.4. Now, this is an example of how this can blow your mind a little bit sometimes. We have a triangle. It says find the area of this right triangle. Dimensions are in feet. And it looks like this, six, eight, and 10. Dimensions are in feet. Okay. So, all right, we use our formula. We figured out the base is 10. But then we go to find the height and we realize if we send the spider up here, we don't know how long this dimension would be. Later, we're gonna learn a tool to find out how to do that. But for right now, we don't have a way to calculate what that height would be. We can't use the six or the eight. I used to always wanna just go, oh, we'll just use the outside, it's close enough. Or like, let's use seven, it's halfway in between. No, you can't, that won't work. What we have to do is visually rotate the triangle either that way or this way so that, no, we need to put the, we want to draw it so it's like this. Let me just tell you what we want to do. 
Okay, we wanna rotate it, we wanna spin it counterclockwise, one click, so that now this will be on the bottom, and then the 10 will be up here as the hypotenuse, and this will be the eight. That makes better sense because now when we spin, send the spider up, this is the height. Right before our problem was when the spider climbed up here, it went like that and we didn't have that number. Now it drops it down on the outside and we can use that. We can go eight times six divided by two and that reduces to four. I always reduce the two against the larger number if I can to keep, keep your numbers small, they're easier to manage. And that becomes 24 feet squared. Um, so by rotating that triangle, we were able to get it to make a lot more sense. We could have rotated it the other way, but then it would have looked really weird. So rotate it so it makes the most sense to you. Um, okay. Another wrinkle, and then we're moving on from this. What if we create a hybrid shape? Find the area of this figure, corners that look square, are square. Okay, that's another way of saying it's easy, don't worry. Dimensions are in yards. The dimension, if, in case you haven't noticed, it doesn't make any difference at all. Who cares if it's yards or inches or meters or miles? It's just the calculation needs a unit in order to be geometrically sound. Okay, this, as you can see, is actually a rectangle stuck to a triangle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is divide the two shapes so I can see them clearly. I'm also gonna put these marks in just to help me remember that all these corners are square. We can do that. You don't have to do that, but I'm doing that just to remind you that that's the truth. So what we see is that we have two different shapes here. We have a rectangle, and we're gonna to need to find the area of that, and we have a triangle, and we're gonna to need to find the area of that. So this is area of a rectangle, area of a triangle. I'll pause for a minute and make sure you have caught up. I'm going fast. Now, we didn't do this up here because we were just using the same formula for all of them. But now, as I do each calculation, I'm gonna write the formula to find the area of that kind of shape. Length time width for that, and then base times height divided by two for the triangle. There are gonna be a lot of different formulas flying around, and you're gonna to need to keep them all straight in your mind. So the rectangle, this part of it, we need the length times the width, and we have to be careful we take the right measure. 10 measures the rectangle, but all of the triangle too. We don't want that. Six is the actual length of the triangle. Four is the width, and that tells us that the area of the rectangle itself is 24. The triangle, um, what we need is the height, right? Because the spider's gonna climb there. So his web is gonna go right down that side. How do we find that side? Well, we look over here, and that side is the same, right? That's the good news about these right angles. These sides are perfectly straight, so we know that this must also be four. We deduced that. So the height is four. The base, how are we gonna find that? Well, we know this whole thing is 10, and we see that the top part of the rectangle is six. The sides are straight, so that means this must be four. So our triangle's height is four and its base is four. We divide by two and we get eight for the area of just the triangle. And then our last step is simply to add them together. And we get 32, unit is yards, and it's squared. Area is always squared because it's two dimensions, length times width, base times height. Yay, that's the right answer. And this was also the right answer. All right. Now we've got triangles under our belt. We've done the area of rectangles, the area of triangles, and now for our crowning glory. Oh no, we don't, we have another one. This is a long lesson, I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, area of circles. Circles are a little bit more complicated. 
um, we've got our circle, we've got our center, we've got the radius here, and the area of a circle, as you remember, equals pi r squared, where r equals the radius. And pi equals 3.14. Remember, it's that, that incredible number that the Greeks determined is drives all the properties of circles. If you want to find the circumference or the area of a circle, pi is the number that helps you find that. Example 8.6. Oh, copy this into your book. All right, you're back. Oh, I'm reading this problem. The radius of a circle is three centimeters. Okay, I'm gonna write centimeters and then I'm gonna write R equals three. Find the area of a circle. All right, we've got our formula right there. So we want to say the area of the circle equals 3.14, that's the value for pi. Three is the radius, right, there it is, squared, okay? Which we can also say is 3.14 times nine. And then I'm gonna do that multiplication right over here. Nine times four is 36. Nine times one is nine, plus three is 12. Nine times three is 27, 28. Two digits behind the decimal, so it goes right there. So the area of our circle is 28.26 centimeters squared. I went and wrote it again but I would be perfectly fine if you just did this and made that your answer, okay? Don't erase your side calculations. Don't cram them over into an unreadable corner. They're a part of the problem and they're important and useful. So this is correct. 8.7. The area of a circle is 25 square meters. The area of a circle is 25 square meters, find the radius, huh? Okay, well usually we work in the other direction, right? Usually we get the radius and we're supposed to find the area. So this one, we're actually working backwards. So here's the way we do that. We take our formula, area of a circle equals pi r squared. Well, we know this area is 25. I'm gonna leave the units off, whoops. I did the opposite of what I said. We're gonna forget about the units for now. We'll put them on at the answer. 25 is the area, so that equals pi r squared. Oh, okay, well that's a little different, isn't it? We're solving for r. So what we would do is we would divide both sides by 3.14. Oops. That will cancel the pi, right? We use it as a symbol there, but it actually represents that number. And then we'll take the square root of that number to get just r. So r equals that. It equals the square root of 25 over 3.14. Um, you need to use a calculator to find that. And my calculator is busy being a camera right now. So I will tell you that John figures it out to be 2.82. I'm sure he rounded to the nearest hundredth. This is a perfectly fine answer for me, but it's kind of hard to see in the solutions manual. So if you if John gives you an answer like this in a problem like this, you have permission to use a calculator just for the last step to simplify that. Okay, those problems are useful because you have to think backwards, right? You're given the area and you have to find the radius and that feels a little backwardsy and that's good for your brain to go in both directions like that. 8.8, .8. okay, here we go. 
It's gonna get a little bit crazier than it has been before. Here's our figure. Find the area of this figure. Lines that look parallel are parallel. Okay, that's good news. The radius is two. This is seven. This is five. This does not look like enough information, does it? To possibly find the area. Dimensions are in inches. But it is, we'll figure it out. What we can tell by this slope is that there's a triangle out here. And what we can tell is that by this shape, this is a semicircle attached to the end. Now, the important thing to remember about semicircles is that when we know the radius, we also know this dimension and this dimension. Because those are just second, those are just more versions of the radius, right? Any line from the center to the edge of the circle is equal to the same number. That's what a circle is. So this is two, and this is also two. That's super important to know because we don't otherwise know this height. And if we know that, those shape dimensions, then we know that this one also must be four because we're told that all these lines are equal. And then right ahead of time, I can also see, oh, the difference between this five and seven, why are those numbers different? Oh, because this one has this triangle tacked on. So I know that this amount must be two, okay? So I went ahead and filled in that extra data before I even went on with the problem because I know I'm gonna need all of those numbers. So now we can carry on. We know that we're gonna be adding three things together here. We're gonna have the area of the triangle and we're gonna have the area of the rectangle and we're gonna have the area, this is how I draw a semicircle. Like that. Okay, this is helping me organize my answer and it's giving me a plan or a roadmap so that I can remember all the steps. The most annoying thing about these problems is there's so many steps and you get in the middle of it and it's hard to remember if you're done yet. So I like to draw this all out because it helps me keep from getting lost in the weeds as I do the problem. All right, I'm also going to write down all the formulas. Area of a triangle, that's base times height divided by 2. Area of a rectangle, that's length times width. Area of a semicircle, okay, this is tricky. Area of a circle is pi r squared. But in order to find half of a circle, I have to divide it by 2. Okay, you don't have to write this down or memorize it. You just have to remember that's the little trick for finding a semicircle is divide it by 2. All right, now we're ready to fill in some numbers. The base of the triangle is 2. The height of the triangle, there's the spider, is 4. We divide it by 2 because that's just what we do. Let's just make the 2's cancel and say the answer is 4. Length times width. The length of the triangle, okay, it's not 7. We determined that 5 is the proper length. And the width, we have to use this trick to find out that it's four. So it's 20 in all. And then the half circle is pi 3.14 times the radius squared. I'm not gonna write it unsquared. I'm just gonna go ahead. The radius is two, so it's times four divided by two because that's the formula. These cancel, which is nice because I can double this number in my head at 6.28. And I'm gonna write that with the decimals lined up so that I can add easily. And my answer is 30.28 inches squared. Cool, right? Takes a little, this is, to me, this is the fun part, how you have to kind of suss out those extra numbers and then you just crank everything through. It's so important that you know all your formulas. If you want to write this one at the front of your book, that the area of a semicircle equals pi r squared divided by two, if you think that would be helpful to write it down, do it. If not, just remember how to do it in your head. The other thing I want to remind you is that we are rounding pi. We're always rounding pi just to two decimals. So our answers are, take that simplification into context, right? The actual answer has infinite decimal places. Okay, now we're on the last topic. The area 
of parallelograms. and trapezoids. Holy smokes. More, really? But here's the good news. These guys are easy. A parallelogram is one that has two pairs of parallel sides. It looks kind of like this. Okay? So the sides are parallel. Um, and a trapezoid has only one pair of parallel sides. Okay, so in a parallelogram, those are parallel, these are parallel. In a trapezoid, only those. These guys are freak children. Okay, so this is a parallelogram and this is a trapezoid. I'm not gonna write them all out again. They both use the same technology and it's super fun. You don't, you, we don't need a formula. What we do with these shapes is we simply cut them into two triangles. You can do it the other way if you want. It doesn't matter, you can't go wrong. But if we cut them into two triangles, we're going to call this one area one and this one area two. Or you can do, eh, that's the best way to do it. And so all we need are some numbers on these and we'll be good to go. I'm just gonna use my same diagrams Example 8.9 is for a parallelogram that has, it gives us all this information. Well, I'll just draw it again, what the heck. I don't wanna try to squeeze it into my other drawing. Here's what we're told. This pair of sides is eight, this pair of sides is five, and then we're told that this dimension is four. Okay, good to know. We divide it This is going to be triangle one. That's going to be triangle two. Let's start with triangle two because it's easier to see that eight is the base and four is the height, right? The spider's sitting right up here. And he drops his thing down and it goes right down there. Okay, and then we divide it by two because that's the formula. This becomes a four, 16, right? Now, I can tell you right now, because this is a parallelogram, area, um, triangle one is gonna have the very same area. We just have to think a little bit to get it that way. What helps me is I imagine taking this top of the triangle and flipping it up, right? So I'm looking at it upside down here, but I'm visually imagining it the other way. The base is eight, and this dimension is still the height, so that's gonna be the four. Divide it by two, we get 16, and that's 32 centimeters was my unit. 32 centimeters squared is our final answer, and that's correct. This one, was this correct? Let me double check. Yes. Okay, so with parallelograms, when we divide it into two, the triangles are the exact same size because everything's parallel. So that is easy. We really don't even have to do the second calculation if it's a parallel event. Trapezoids, the triangles will be different. This is our last problem, by the way. I know, you wish this lesson could just go on forever. We're having so much fun. Example 8.10, this one is a trappy. These sides just happen to be the same. The height, John's giving us the height like this. It's another way, rather than drawing the dotted line and showing it in there, he's showing it to us on the outside. That's fine. This is nine and this is 15. Okay, so. Ooh, that's not a straight line, pretend it is. There are our two triangles. Um, I'm gonna label them like this, but I'm gonna do the second one first because it's easier, because we can imagine it just the way it is. All right, so we need, this is a triangle. So it's base times height divided by two. The base of this triangle is 15. 
the height is four divided by two, 30 is our unit. And I just went back to the problem and said, dimensions are in meters, okay? All right, we've got the first one. Now, we need to do, well, technically that was the second one, so now we're doing the first one. This is the one where you kind of have to visualize it. Um, this is gonna become the base when we flip it, and it's gonna go like that, right? And this height will still be four. Okay, this will still be five. All right, so the base of this one is nine. The height is still four. And we divide it by two because that's the formula. Nine times two equals 18. And so we add together at the end Sometimes students will forget what you do with those numbers at the end. Just think of it logically. We just want to add them together. 48 meters squared. Yay. So, parazoids, parazoids. Parallelograms and trapezoids seem like they're going to be really complicated, but they're not because we just convert them into two circles. We are gonna be doing a lot of problems like this, you guys, and they can get tedious and old. So give your brain a break if you're doing too many of them in a row. Um, but they're not hard, and I hope you can find a way to enjoy them. Well, they are hard. I take that back. They're, they require a lot of different information. So, thank you, enjoy. I will see you for your check-in on either Thursday from noon to two, or on Friday from noon to two. I wanna to talk to each of you. Um, any video chat, it can be, it can be FaceTime, it can be Messenger, it could be WhatsApp, whatever, whatever video chat system you wanna use, um, let me know and reach out to me. You don't have to call ahead and say, hey, are you free? I'm sitting by my phone with a book just waiting for someone to call me and talk to me about math. Um, and I'll have a review problem for you. We'll chat briefly. It'll probably take five, 10 minutes max, depending on how long it takes you to work the problem. Okay, so be sure to check in with me, um, one or the other, not both. Um, and, and let me know, reach out to me or have your mom reach out to me if this does not work with your schedule. Okay, I'm done. Goodbye.